Hello again. Any theory or doctrine which is true and founded upon evidence should not need to be defended with falsehoods and deceit. If we found that those who work in the field of quantum mechanics were only able to um, explain their ideas by misleading people about history or hurling abuse at those who held a different view of the behaviour of subatomic particles and so on, then we might be a little suspicious about this. Why, we would perhaps ask ourselves, are these people telling lies and being rude if their belief system is a rational one based upon scientific inquiry? This is uh, the question which some of us ask about the champions of the equalitarian dogma. That is the view that all humans of all ethnicities are equal in cognitive ability and everything else. Worse still, those who are fiercest in their advocacy of this cause are now using the very same tools which were used in the 20th century by the proponents of scientific racism, which is a truly dreadful <laughs> irony. The best way of examining what is now happening in the field of anti-racism, motivated and inspired by the equalitarian doctrine, is to look closely at what one or two of the more articulate and well-known academics in the field have to say on the subject. Let's begin by taking a book published by that most respectable of houses, the Oxford University Press. It's in their series of a very short introduction books, in which leading experts write short books which explain topics ranging from accounting to Zionism for the ordinary uh, non-academic reader. Ali Ratansi, a professor of sociology, is the author of Racism, a very short introduction. This was uh, originally published in 2007 and then comprehensively updated and revised in 2020. It's from the 2020 edition that I take the two quotations. I mentioned this book last week, but since then I've had a chance to read the whole thing and it's absolutely frightful. It is perhaps particularly unfortunate that the very first sentence of this book, which I have here incidentally, is deliberately untrue. It reads, and I turn to page one, the term racism was coined in the 1930s primarily as a response to the Nazi project, project of making Germany Judenrein, or free of Jews. It's probably fair to assume that an authority in the field of racism like Professor Ratansi knows perfectly well that he has begun his book with a falsehood and that he knows that the term racism was first set down in print in 1903, 30 years before the Nazis came to power in Germany. It was an American who was first recorded using uh, the word in a speech denouncing racial prejudice against American Indians. In 1902, the unfortunately named General Richard Pratt said, segregating any class or race of people apart from the rest of the people kills the progress of the segregated people or makes their growth very slow. Association of races and classes is necessary in order to destroy racism and classism. This is the first time that the word uh, can be found in print, but it was doubtless being used much earlier than this. I give a reference for this in the description to this video. The question we have to ask ourselves is why Professor Matanzi should say something of this sort. I'm guessing that he is a good deal more clever than me and also knows far more about racism than I do. It is absolutely absurd to think that he would write a book like this and not bother to check what he says in the very first sentence on page one. The explanation is, of course, that by linking the word to the Nazis and the Holocaust, it at make, once makes the very notion of racism disreputable and something that no decent person would touch with a barge pole. In short, his aim is not to provide objective information to readers, 
but rather to publish propaganda for a political cause. I will point out another example of the way in which this well-known authority does its best to spread misinformation and engages in agitprop. On page 103, we read the following. Successively talking here of Britain and British problems specifically. Successive governments, although economically reliant on coloured, in brackets, workers, remained anxious about the new arrivals and for many years did nothing to prevent discrimination that was openly on display in the windows in houses, for example, which boldly stated no coloureds, no dogs, sometimes adding no Irish as well. This is simply untrue. And once again, I'm sure that Professor Vitalisi knows it's untrue. There were certainly signs in windows in the 1950s saying, room to let, sorry, no coloureds. I remember seeing such things. The idea though, of signs saying no blacks, no dogs, no Irish was dreamed up in the 1980s for political reasons when Irish Republicans wished to show people that their experience was similar to that of black people in the United States. This was at a time when they depended heavily upon Americans to finance the IRA and by drawing parallels between the treatments of blacks in the Deep South and the supposed treatment of Irish people in Britain in the 1950s, they thought it would tug at the heartstrings and thus loosen the purse strings of those who would help them buy armour like rifles and Semtex. As part of this uh, plot, we may well call it, a notice was mocked up using a felt marker pen and then photographed. This image is the only one to be found on the internet, saying uh, no blacks, no dogs, no Irish. There are certainly no contemporary record of any such things in the 1950s and 60s. I give a link in the description to this video to a letter in The Guardian a few years ago which covers this, uh, which is probably best described as an urban myth. Once again, I'm sure that Batanzi knows all this as well as I do. It suits his purposes, though, to engage in the distortion of history in this way. As I said at the start, if the equalitarian doctrine is true, then why is it that the champions of this viewpoint always tell so many lies and are constantly trying to rewrite history?